Okay, now it's time. So uh, let's begin. Uh, let me first invite uh, Dr. Susumu Goto, the Vice President of DB Series, for an opening address. Uh, Dr. Susumu Goto, please. Hello. Uh... I'm Susumu Goto from uh, Database Center for Life Science, DBCLS. Uh, on behalf of the BLA Organizing Committee, I'd like to thank you for joining this Glass 7. And as many of you are facing difficulties in this COVID-19 pandemic, we have to give up, uh, we have to give up a usual face-to-face -face meeting and go online this year. And the situation of COVID-19 in Japan was, I think, better than those in US and Europe, but it is becoming worse now. And the, it is not recommended to go out for dinner bar or parties after 7 p.m. now. So uh, uh, in that sense, we can focus on this hackathon at this time uh, frame. So, and also, the, this year, the topic focuses on the COVID-19 related annotations and analysis. And I found that there are already a plenty of useful resources available for use from you. And we are ready to fight against COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2. So I hope you enjoy the hackathon and find somehow a way to end this pandemic so that we can uh, we will be able to have a face-to-face -face meeting next year at uh, the BRA in Japan. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, and uh, I am Jindo Kim. Uh, let me uh, introduce uh, this uh, BRA event. Okay, this is the uh, seventh BRA event. And BLA is, uh, as many of you already know, it's an acronym for Biomedical Linked Annotation Hackathon. And uh, it is the um, seventh event. And uh, last year, uh, it was held in Tokyo, uh, February. And we were all worried about the uh, beginning of this uh, pandemic. And now we are passing through the middle of this pandemic. And, uh, I hope now we are passing through the most uh, the most difficult time now, and uh, things will get uh, better uh, from now on. And uh, many of you maybe may be may familiar with this uh, elephant now. Uh, the idea of this live event is um, uh, any single group cannot be perfect. So um, if we uh, join the force together, then we can uh, do better mining. And um, uh, this year we have um, this special team, how fine it can help fight uh, COVID-19 if forces are joined. So the stress should go the latter part, let's join the force uh, through this uh, hackathon event. And, uh, uh, plus seven consists of uh, three plenary meetings. Today is the first one. Uh, and today we will uh, see several project presentations. Uh, we have 12 projects or tutorial uh, presentations. Uh, one project, MQI, uh, there will be no presentation. Uh, but um, you can see the presentation through the video clip. and. Um, on Wednesday, there will be uh, intermediate updates of the hackathon activities. And on Friday, we will have uh, final laptops. And for the hackathon part, uh, the Lemo site uh, will be open uh, from 10 to midnight uh, in Japan time uh, from tomorrow. Uh, so please uh, join Lemo and uh, do some active discussions and uh, some interesting chattings and but uh, you should be aware that um, lemon needs to be reset in every five hours so um, in every five hours we all have to get out of the lemon site and in uh, two minutes you can 
uh, get in the lemon site again. And uh, as a uh, common uh, effort in this uh, hackathon event, uh, we prepared this uh, lit COVID collection at cover notation. Uh, and um, we collected uh, several annotations and they are stored in cover notation. And this is uh, the uh, example. So for the lit COVID, uh, lit COVID is a collection of literature that are related to COVID-19. It is a contribution uh, by NCBI, Jiyong News Group. And um, this is an example. And um, we collected uh, several annotations. Uh, you will see uh, pop data annotation and uh, uh, HP is a human phenotype annotation. And um, OGO annotation should be there. And uh, these annotations we collected and harmonized, and they are available uh, in pub annotation. Uh, we wanted to let you use uh, Sparkle Query over the uh, annotations. Uh, the Sparkle Query will be ready tomorrow. It is not yet uh, ready. So the IDFization process is now under, undergoing. So, um, this um, IDF uh, resources will be ready tomorrow. And we have several projects, uh, tutorials, and uh, resources. Uh, some are for multilingualism, some are for drug recovery, and uh, uh, some will add some unique annotation like uh, measurables. Uh, and we will also uh, work with um, Twitter data, so it will be uh, very diverse uh, activities. And uh, with this, some um, diverse uh, projects and resources, uh, we can think about some um, interesting potential collaborations, like um, to the annotations so we already prepared. If we add uh, different annotations, what kind of applications will be possible or uh, how we can connect the multilingual resources with uh, the PubMed resources, or how we can connect uh, different contents like um, uh, literature for evidences and maybe SNS for instances, and how we can uh, make connection uh, these uh, different contents and make some inter uh, interesting applications. And uh, for today's presentation, each speaker, please use five minutes for presentation uh, and discussion over your projects. And uh, uh, please share your screen for your presentation. And from the floor, uh, during while the speaker is um, speaking, please use Zoom chatting uh, for question or comments. Or if you have a long question, then maybe you can raise your hand. Okay, uh, that's the introduction of this hackathon event, and I hope you will have a lot of fun uh, in this week. Okay, uh, then uh, I will turn to Fabio for uh, your presentation. All right, so I'll try to say in a few minutes what's, uh, what this is, is this about. Um, we have developed over the past several years an um, entity annotation tool for the scientific literature. It's called OGA, Ontogene Entity Recognition. And what we have been doing over the past uh, several months, since the beginning of the pandemic, is to annotate scientific literature uh, related to COVID-19 uh, with the entities provided by this uh, entity recognition tool. Um, actually, we don't do any um, selection of the literature. Uh, we relied on uh, existing repositories, mostly on LitCovid, that will be presented later. Um, so the, the focus is on application of the entity recognition. Let me show you. So our entity recognition tool provides a, a number of entities of different types 
um, organisms. Uh, maybe I try to make it bigger. I don't know if this is any better. Do you still see the uh, the full screen, full slide, or do you see only a fragment? Yeah, so um, um, you see different entity types, and um, this is very efficient process and very rich entity annotation. Associated to each entity, there is a type coming from the um, reference database. So the source of the terminology is a tool called the Biotherm Hub, which you see here, which basically is, is another tool that we develop, where, which can use to collect terminologies from reference databases. So we can go, so if you want a terminology, for example, of um, Swiss prot, the proteins are Swiss prot, you can select Swiss prot in this interface. If you want also KB, you select Swiss prot and KB, and so on and so forth. You select the resources that you want, and you can download the terminology, and then use these terminologies for the annotations of uh, Augur. And the advantage of the process is that the terminology can always be kept up to date with respect to the original resource, and in sync with the original resource. It also means that the annotations are always associated with an identifier, from uh, a database identifier from that original resource. Um, so what we propose specifically as a task in uh, this year is to use this entity annotation tool through a simple API. And, um, and we propose a, a, a three uh, steps um, in order to use Ogre for different purposes. So the first step is simply to teach the basic of using the Ogre API. The second step is about uh, um, annotating or finding sentences that are particularly relevant for a task, for example, containing a drug and the mention of COVID-19. Um, and the third task is a more complex classification task. The link that you see here is the most important one. Uh, it's also given in the, in the page of the projects, so it's the main link. From there, you will find all the material. So if you follow that link, you will access the list of the task, and then from there, you can access each of these subtasks. If you go to the first subtask, this is about understanding how to use uh, the Ogre API. And there, you will find um, a, a, another link, uh, a pointer to a video, this video here. This video uh, describes in more detail what is Ogre and how to use it. Um, it's not necessary to watch the entire video. The first five minutes are sufficient. This is a video that I prepared before for a conference. I prepared this uh, video six months ago. Um, but the first five minutes are a good introduction of Uber. So I invite you to watch five minutes of this video. And then uh, there is another link to the instructions on how to use uh, uh, Uber. Actually, this is probably the most important thing. Uh, Let's see if I can uh, show you. Uh, basically, if you if you open the link, uh, do you see my? No, you don't see this now. Um, okay, no, uh, I cannot show you the web page because I would have to change what I share. Let me see if I can. <coughs> oh, sorry, this doesn't work. I cannot share the web page. Uh, well, okay. So if you follow the link, you will find. Uh, a series of steps that show you how you do a basic query, how you get, um, send a PubMed ID to Augur and get back the annotations in a simple TSV format. Um, and it's actually very simple. So task one is just very basic. Uh, you can do it in 10 minutes and uh, understand how to use the Augur API. Um, the annotation will come, as I said, come back in a TSV format, which can then be used for other um, steps. So I move to subtask two. Um, in uh, subtask two, what we propose is to uh, look at um, uh, some drugs that have been mentioned in relation to COVID-19, uh, in particular hydroxychloroquine, remdesivir, and Avigan. All these three drugs have been mentioned at different points in time as um, during the past few months as potentially uh, useful. Uh, for example, uh, Trump has mentioned it, uh, hydroxychloroquine, Bolsonaro has mentioned hydroxychloroquine. There's been a lot of hype about hydroxychloroquine. And also there has been some about remdesivir and Avigan. Avigan is a Japanese uh, drug, by the way. 
and um, and so what, what but there has been there's been a lot of uh, debate on whether these drugs are really useful or not uh, um, seems there is not so much scientific evidence so what we propose is to go and find scientific evidence so uh, using ogre you can um, process a collection of articles containing these drugs uh, and uh, and then find sentences that mention um, the drug in relation to the covid-19 um, this is uh, relatively easy to do. We also um, give you a little starter code uh, in Python in, uh, in the pages of the project. And, and then you can, um, yeah, so what we would like to get at the end of this is a collection of statements that are pro or against uh, one of these drugs, the oxychloroquine and the CV and other kind. Okay, so, and this is for, for us is the main task. Um, then, uh, and it's important also because we are just studying separately um, at, um, in another project. The, Fabio? Uh, yes? You are using almost all time for my video. Okay, uh, <laughs> then I'll skip the comment and move to the final one, uh, final task, subtask three, that is about classification. Basically, we will give you a set of uh, a collection of um, uh, literature about COVID, a small collection annotated with different categories uh, of clinical relevance. And we have an application that uses this. Uh, and, uh, and what we would like to do have is better ways to classify automatically articles. So check the description and maybe we can describe this again on Wednesday if, if, uh, if someone wants to try this. So final, uh, um, please ch again check the descriptions, the videos. Uh, feel free to contact us for any question. Mail me or mail, uh, or mail my collaborators, which are listed in this slide. Uh, Joseph Cornelius and Oscar Litkov, in particular Joseph for task, subtask one and two, and Oscar for subtask three. Um, yeah, or contact us on Slack. So thank you for giving me this opportunity to present this work, and I hope you enjoy uh, Blah this year. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I will try to make this presentation very short. Uh, uh, this is rather a uh, tutorial than a uh, project. Uh, and I will talk about uh, this public, public dictionaries uh, system. Uh, and um, it is used to annotate the lead COVID. And you know, uh, there are uh, many literature collections uh, related to COVID-19. Uh, lit COVID, uh, COVID-19, and also on uh, Twitter uh, collection. Uh, and there are, of course, uh, several uh, annotation projects like Pocketer and OBA. And actually, there are quite a few annotation projects. They are all very great, I think. Uh, Pocketer annotation, I, I found it very um, thorough and uh, comprehensive. And, and the OGA also, I, 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 I found this um, very, very nice annotations. And um, uh, this update annotation is loaded in, uh, loaded in public annotation uh, for integration with other uh, annotations. And um, uh, in public annotation, we can make collectionable uh, documents. Like, um, for example, in PubMed, uh, uh, if you search for uh, search with these uh, keywords, uh, hydroxychloroquine and COVID-19, it will give you a list of uh, matches. And uh, I, I usually use some simple uh, Perl uh, script to get the, the PMID of uh, with these some keywords, and uh, it, it gave me uh, 900 uh, PubMed uh, uh, PMIDs and. If you have this PMID, you can create a PubMed project. Uh, you can easily create a PubMed project, a pub annotation project with this um, PMIDs. And um, uh, so you can watch this video later uh, to see how you can create a PubMed a pub annotation project uh, with your pub, uh, PMID list. And um, uh, so, uh, we have um, a collection of literature and we have a um, pop data annotation, old annotation. And um, we have also other annotations like um, uh, human phenotype annotation. Uh, 
But still, uh, when we try to use the annotation, we still find some, some missing pieces because, of course, uh, any annotation project cannot be perfect. And uh, as scientists, uh, some experts will find um, some missing pieces. For example, in this example, uh, the phenotypes are well uh, annotated, but um, there are some missing annotations like um, loss of taste in the end of uh, the example. There is this loss of taste. It's, it is very important uh, phenotype uh, to identify uh, COVID-19 uh, case, uh, but it is missing. So there would be always missing pieces. Then, then how we can do? Uh, so. Uh, we need uh, some some means to to get the annotation, and um, uh, one way would be a manual annotation, but it's slow and um, it is costly. And um, you can watch this video to see how you can create a manual annotation on uh, pub annotation. And uh, what I want to skip in now. Another approach we offer is um, customization of uh, dictionaries. This public dictionary system offer a uh, very easy way of customizing your dictionaries. You can easily add or delete uh, entries from uh, dictionaries and you can, you can immediately uh, apply the dictionary for annotation and see the result. You can watch this video. Uh, how to use some um, public dictionaries for customization of uh, annotations. Uh, but now I am skipped uh, this video. And uh, after customization, you can apply this dictionary for annotation of a collection of uh, literature uh, easily. And you can watch this video. And uh, as the result, uh, we can get the the missing piece, loss of annotation, loss of taste annotation easily. Uh, so through this uh, presentation, okay. So using this public dictionary system, we we uh, created this um, with COVID human phenotype annotation, geo uh, biological process annotation, and glyco epitope annotation. And through this um, system, what we would like to focus on is um, the agile annotation. But when we need some, some new annotation to fill missing pieces, we, we should be able to fill the gap uh, immediately and the customizability. So we should be able to easily customize the, the, the annotation result so that uh, the data can, can uh, fulfill our, uh, our uh, goal. Okay, that's the end of my, my uh, presentation. Uh, and um, we are behind the schedule quite. So let's move to the next uh, presentation. Okay, can you, can you see my, my presentation? Yes. Okay, are you seeing the slides? So hello everyone. I am Pedro and I'm here on behalf of, um, of our team, which is called Lazish. And our team is composed by Marcia, Marcia Barros, Diana Souza, and Francisco Couto. And our project is called uh, Annotating a Multilingual COVID-19 Related Corpus. So our motivation is aligned with the, with the motivation of the BLA7, uh, because there is an increasing number of publications about COVID-19 but there is a lack of COVID-19 related data sets, especially for other languages besides English. And in this case, our project will focus uh, on developing, on developing uh, annotated data sets uh, with focus on Portuguese and Spanish languages besides the English. So our goal will be the creation of a parallel multilingual data set for text mining systems uh, considering COVID-19 related literature. So in terms of methodology, the first step is the data retrieval. Uh, and we, uh, we have used the PubMed API to retrieve abstracts related with COVID-19, both, uh, both for the Portuguese English dataset, which means that in this dataset, 
all the abstracts are uh, simultaneously available for English and Portuguese. And then we also created a data set for English and Spanish uh, documents. The next step was the named entity recognition and entity linking step, which in which basically we applied uh, a tool that our group have developed, developed the MER, the MER tool, and we obtained annotations pertaining several uh, biomedical ontologies. In this case, we are seeing uh, uh, an example showing entities for that, that were annotated with mesh IDs, but we annotated uh, entities and linked them to several ontologies like the CAVI, uh, Human Phenotype Ontology, and so on. And the next step was the um, relation extraction and we also use uh, a tool that we have developed called beyond and in this case we are interested in extracting relations between uh, human phenotypes in the, in the same uh, articles the final step uh, we applied a recommender algorithm which is called libretti and our goal here was to obtain a data set containing uh, a containing user uh, item rating, for example, in this case, we have um, we have an author, we have an entity, and then we have a, a rating. I will explain this better in the in the further slides. But first, I will talk about the evaluation. Our goal is to I don't know if you can see. Our goal is to create a subset of annotations for each of of these parts. We have obtained the automatic annotations, and then we want your participation to, uh, to help us invalidate this annotation. So in the first case, in the first step for the name entity recognition and entity linking annotations, we have, for example, here an, uh, a random sentence that we have retrieved, and then we apply the automatic tools. And in this case, the tool have recognized the entity head, but and it was linked later to uh, the CAVI terminology. But as you can see, if you, re if you re read this sentence, this, this entity is not related to any chemical compound. So in this case, this annotation is wrong. So we want your help to, to help us to determine what annotations are wrong. And yeah. our plan is to upload uh, each of these uh, data sets to the pub annotation and then have people uh, reviewing those annotations. Basically, we, we, want, we, want, we will uh, upload a subset of the, those data sets, data sets, and then people will check if the annotations are wrong, we'll add new annotations. And then, and then at the end, for example, for this part specifically, for the name entity recognition part, uh, we, we will calculate the inter-annotated agreement be, uh, between the several people that have annotated, and basically, uh, that's the main goal. Uh, hi, <laughs> it's me to uh, do the presentation. Um, uh, can you see the, the, the PPT? Yes. Okay. Yeah, good. Um, this is um, um, our um, HSC project, and uh, we're from the HCAU Bio Novi team. And in our project, we'll um, discuss our uh, annotation from HSC Corpus, which is uh, um, the corpus we developed and, it, uh, and uh, it is aims on the mutation and the biological processes in the literature. So, um, and more of the information about our corpus you can find in our video. So uh, in our project, we will discuss two topics. Um, the first one is, What's the next after the uh, after we extract the tons of information from the uh, COVID-19 literature? Since we um, by uh, by applying our agency corpus, we can get a lot of the information um, about the change the biological processes that that is mentioned in uh, COVID-19 literature. Um, and we want to discuss uh, we want to discuss how to use this information this information to do some uh, um, further knowledge, inf knowledge inference. Um, maybe we could use this um, information to construct a knowledge graph. Um, and uh, uh, for example, we can, uh, the, 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 the important thing that annotated by AJC labels um, uh, maybe can become the nodes in the graph and the uh, relation between the nodes is the edge in the graph. 
Uh, so after uh, we construct this graph, we may uh, find uh, some novel pathological mechanism, which is hidden in the graph. Or uh, maybe we can find some important paths between the gene nodes or the disease nodes um, to find some, uh, uh, to infer some uh, knowledge. Uh, so the second topic is, uh, is how to make the extracted agency label. Uh, to uh, to to really help help us to fight the COVID nineteen. Um, so actually, this topic is about the application of our um, annotation result. Um, and one of the uh, one of the application we want to discuss is the drug repurposing. Uh, we want to combine the drug information from the other database or the uh, other annotation from other team. Um, we, we want to combine the different information, uh, uh, combine the drug information and our uh, AGSA annotation um, to uh, do the drug repurposing or to, to predict the possible drug for COVID-19. Uh, and uh, here is our uh, early example um, about our uh, annotation, we use the cytoscape to uh, present part of the data. And the node and the uh, edge is all, all come from our AJC annotation. Um, here is the here is our uh, annotations on the uh, pub annotation. Uh, the, the, the figure, the figure at this page, the annotation is all comes from this page. We uh, we 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 use the annotation at 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 here to construct that uh, picture, and also we will provide uh, our all uh, annotations on COVID nineteen. So in this high song, we want to discuss how to how to use this annotation. Um, and this is the end of my uh, presentation. Yes, yes. Yes, do you hear me? Okay, okay. So as you said, I have, I, should I show uh, any uh, uh, high slides at all or just like a summary, a very short summary, right? So uh, my video is online. So we are some of the organizers of the WNT uh, biomedical test. So, so this is a uh, 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 how much in translation tests uh, focus on biomedical uh, uh, publications. So our uh, goal here uh, in BLAST 7 is that we usually have our training data as like uh, zip files that we uh, release from time to time to our participants. So we want to try to have this parallel uh, data uh, in public notation. So there is a new feature that was uh, implemented that allow us to to uh, specify which language we want a publication to download those documents. So yeah, so as I said, our goal is to try to, to move this training data uh, to public notation and we will focus on seven languages. So, well, it's always like uh, 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 English to and from French, Portuguese, Spanish, Italian, Russian, and Chinese. And there is one missing that I can't remember. Uh, but well, it's seven uh, in total. And yes, we'll check if we can yeah do this 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 transfer uh, during this week and and give a try with some of uh, our baseline machine translation uh, system. So, so uh, my name is Felipe Soares. Um, I'm from the University of Sheffield, and this year I will work on JMesh, which is a Japanese mesh silver corpus for COVID-19 related literature. This is actually um, more of controlled vocabulary rather than, than a corpus. So um, very briefly, the goal is to provide the Japanese control vocabulary of medical terms related to COVID-19. So the idea is to devise a system that can be language agnostic for the creation and mapping of these multilingual controlled vocabularies to MASH. So we know that MASH has uh, already mapped to Portuguese, Spanish, uh, French, but Japanese and some other languages are still missing. So there is the need of increasing this, this coverage. So the approach will be that given that we have a, a set of MASH terms, we will find on the English literature the sentences that are annotated 
with this term. In this case, we could use from uh, updater the ones that are already flagged as match terms. And then use machine translation to create, let's say, an artificial um, RL corpus. And using those kind of old techniques from uh, latent semantic indexing and other corpus approaches, uh, corporate approaches, um, use co-occurrence of words in English and engrams of Japanese characters to evaluate the likelihood of even engram in Japanese being the equivalent of that term in English. So this is uh, pretty much the, um, the pipeline. We use we would ex extract the terms from uh, lit COVID, then find the sentences in English that contain uh, that term, use machine translation, calculate the co-occurrence and mutual information, and then rank the Japanese engram candidates by likelihood, and then still for standard, which uh, later on would be needed to be validated manually to be sure that it's appropriate. So here is just a simple, a simple example that is on the GitHub as well. So I got three sentences in English with pulmonary embolism, used um, machine translation from DeepL to translate those to Japanese. And then I found that these set of uh, five grams were uh, co-occurring with, with pulmonary embolism. So this would be a good candidate for, for them. So regarding the resources, first one will be uh, lead COVID to extract the, the literature, the Amazon Translate API, um, and the Deep, Deep Health Pro API, which um, will provide free access for, for these specific purposes. And maybe um, there is a, an already available UMLS tagged um, corpus of PubMed. And this is the link for for the GitHub if you want to cooperate with me. Thank you. All right, I hope you can see this. Uh, just uploaded my video this morning. At um, the project is called NLP to VSM. Uh, VSM is a way to represent um, any knowledge with a rich context in a form that is uh, semantically precise, and that can be queried. Therefore, so a quick background, what is VSM? The video said it nicely, I'm just giving you a few screen caps so you can see what it, ha what it is. You have terms which are actually um, representatives for identifiers, you rise, you have connectors, and you can just start building a very complex unit of information. That would not be true in its own if you just chopped part of it. So. It's to represent the units of knowledge. All right, everything is an identifier. Everything is uh, this, if you would export it to RDF. Um, yeah, the goal with um, DSM is to have something that can stand in the middle between, um, especially domain experts like biologists, um, uh, people who want to query, who really don't understand how semantics and uh, Sparkle or so, or text mining works. And to connect that with text mining, with by curation, with uh, logical inference, and uh, basically computer science in general. So uh, the purpose of my participation in uh, the Bla Hackathon is to um, uh, interact with people who know more, much more about text mining than I do. Uh, Yin Dong uh, had a look at VSM before, and he said that it should probably be doable to map the output of, for example, the NGO deep semantic parser onto these VDM structures. Um, yeah, so I'm actually here to have discussions with people who have uh, ideas to contribute on this topic. Maybe to do some preliminary coding, maybe to think about a, a future project proposal, but just to see how this would fit into this ecosystem. Um, yeah, this is also a slide that is on the GitHub repository. Um, this is the some NGO output I talked about, and they manually converted this to a VSM structure that is uh, equivalent. Um, it has a JSON output, you can also have RDF outputs. Uh, yeah, so if you have uh, interest in talking about this, 
please do so. It may be more advanced than um, tight and single entities because it's actually connecting the entities through relations so that you can uh, meaningfully add this, uh, specify this context. So yeah, if you have interest in talking with me about this, uh, please join the Slack channel or contact me. Thank you. So hi everyone, can you hear me? So uh, I'm Estiano. This is the first time to present and join in the bra. Actually, I'm a little bit nervous. However, let me talk about my project, the viewpoint of the clinicians. Basically, I used to be the neurologist and um let me explain about what happened actually in the clinical setting so when we the clinician see the patient in the clinic so we accumulate or pick up the patient information as possible as like the chief complaint or present medical history or past medical history like that and uh, establish or develop the differential diagnosis list and then check up the what is the uh, most likely diagnosis? However, some patient, we can't reach to the actual diagnosis. Then uh, we move on to much more detailed information from the patient, like specific lab test or biopsy or like some invasive testing, and then make another much deeper differential diagnosis list, like second one. However, even in the such a deeper differential diagnosis, the sometimes clinician encounter patient how to make diagnosis, what is the next? It's a kind of the seed of the headache always for the clinicians. And why difficult? So every clinician potentially encounters such rare disease patient, basically such rare disease experts, it's very few numbers. So we don't have chance to run about such rare disease. And also, like uh, such rare disease information is hard to accumulate on the update in the individual medical doctor. However, recent advances in the diagnostic support system allow us to reach rare disease with common presentations or in the textbook. But it is still hard to know how many rare disease patients show up with uncommon presentations like time course, frequencies, and the combination of symptoms, and how diverse their symptoms, especially they show the uncommon presentations. So these kinds of information is very, very important to make much deeper differential diagnosis list. So to address such question, I propose to develop the reference system enable to know the combination of symptoms in each individual patient based on the previous publications. So such system, I believe, helpful to build a differential diagnosis list based on the frequency or reality of combination of symptoms. Also help to think about the frequency of individual patients based on the combination of symptoms. So let me like some explain about the Alexander disease. So as a proof of concept, I picked up one rare uh, genetic uh, congenital disorder, Alexander disorders, uh, because this is 90% uh, of this case are associated with the pathogenic variant of the single one gene GFAP. And also the traditional classifications, they divide it based on the onset of age in the four type, neonatal, infantile, juvenile, and adult. However, uh, they know the adult onset cases, even they uh, spread a 33%, their presentation is really, really diverse, and they show very, very mild symptoms in some case. And uh, so um, in the 2011, they uh, revised the uh, classification of the Alexander disorder with uh, 215 cases. And what they did is, so type one, they accumulated all the clinical information based on the symptom or physical examination data and divided into two types, so type one and type two. However, like some currently, like some the patient number or reported cases already leads to the 550 cases. And so now I'm thinking about to accumulate uh, the available 
case report and case reads and check the data shape like, so this is a case report shape. Uh, this is a really, really descriptive. And also this is a case report, uh, case series data. Uh, they make kind of the lists, but uh, this kind of the, these two different types of the data is also helpful to know, to, to accumulate the patient data. And then extract the text data from PDF and organize uh, uh, extracted features for each individual patient and analyze to categorize to extract uh, what is the uh, like character of the common group or the uncommon group. And if we can make such patient symptom derived categorizations, we can match your case, so your which group is uh, you can match to the like some groups, like, and also you can see the diversity of the uncommon case at a glance uh, with looking at the group four, the low frequencies. So actually this is a kind of the things what I want to like some run. However, like some, I don't have any like some knowledge and ability to learn the bioinformatics too. So I appreciate any input or any help. Thank you. Um, so I'm uh, in the glycans group. Uh, and as many of you know, probably already, you know, glycans are found on every cell uh, in the organisms. They cover the, the proteins and the lipids on the cell surface and they're recognized by uh, viruses, especially COVID. Um, actually, on the on the COVID spike protein, the, this is the green, yellow, and orange is the the spike protein on um, COVID nineteen. Uh, ACE, the ACE two receptor is one in blue, and um, they found you know the glycans are covering both proteins uh, very heavily, and so um, it's expected that you know the glycans must have some kind of function in um, in the interaction. Uh, so uh, glycans are represented using these kinds of symbols. Uh, so there's lots of glycan um, images in the literature and they're not really represented in text. So one of the um, issues that we, or one of the plans that we have for our, um, the, during BLA is to be able to extract that kind of image information uh, in, the, in the, in in images in publications. So uh, that's one of the goals. And then the other one is that uh, text representations of glycans are often used um, using IUPAC or um, actually there's some more um, ambiguous representations as compositions of monosaccharides. And so we've made a dictionary with um, Jin Dong's um, pub annotation. And so we hope to be able to uh, annotate uh, a lot of the, the COVID related publications for glycan related terms. Uh, and the glycan image project that we have uh, is planning, it's, there's already something out there um, developed by at, uh, George Washington University, but we want to um, expand expand that. Uh, so the plan is to take uh, images like this, these are mass spec, mass spec of uh, glyc glycomics data, and extract the glycan structures. And then from each of the, the glycan structures, extract the monosaccharide and the linkage information, uh, and then map those to glycan like, IDs. This, this is a repository of glycan structures. And that way we can link uh, these glycans in the literature from images to uh, other publications and other related information. The other related information are all available in Glycosmos, Glycosmos portal, which we've been developing with this uh, integrated database project. So we have proteins, glycans, genes, lipids, um, anything related to glycans uh, in this portal and it's all, a lot of it is RDFized already. So we're hoping to take the pub annotation uh, annotations, uh, extract them as RDF, and then uh, po populate a glycosmos uh, with the latest information from the literature. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Okay, yeah. So the, the project for this block <laughs> that we proposed is to do a biomedically oriented, automatically annotated Twitter COVID-19 data set. And uh, I mean, just going over quickly, the idea is here is to use, you know, all the best practices, state of the art things that have come out recently, you know, to clean all these tweets to be able to actually focus on, you know, uh, clinically relevant tweets. Uh, we shown that that could be done. It needed a lot of work. It needed manual review, but for a small subset. However, you know, we want to try to do this at scale because this data set that we're using. It has around 900 million tweets. So we want to be able to, you know, 
it kind of generate some annual, uh, some automatic annotations from them. And we're thinking of using MedAC, MedSpacey, SciSpacey, and all these different ones. And also we're thinking of just using basic uh, term tagging as well, just to compare against the gold standard that we curated by hand that we're using for uh, different uh, share tasks in the social media for health wor workshop. So we have an annotated set. We want to annotate a very large set and see how, you know, how automatically, how well this is, this is able to be done using off-the-shelf things to begin with, with the idea of, you know, releasing this larger data set. So far, we're only doing, we're, uh, and I mean, we, uh, I'm working with Tiffany Callahan on this. Uh, we're using, we're doing it in English, but if there's anybody in this call or in this blog that is interested in, you know, that knows tools to do this in a different language, that would be awesome. The data set has 69 different languages and there's enough data in the millions of documents for most of them. So if you're interested in collaborating, uh, yeah, feel free to reach out. Hello everyone. My name is Alexis Alot and with my colleague, King Yu Chen, we are very happy to talk about LitCovid at this conference. As you all know, since the outbreak of the current pandemic, there has been a rapid growth of scientific literature on COVID-19, making it difficult to stay up to date. Therefore, in February 2020, we have created LitCovid, a literature hub dedicated to COVID-19 related literature. In addition to presenting a curated set of publications limited, limited to the new coronavirus, we have added specialized features to make the discovery and analysis of the literature easier. These features include classifying all publications into relevant medical categories, such as treatment, diagnosis, case reports, and others, but also a global world map representing all countries, regions, cities, mentions, mentioned in the abstracts, facets to filter publications that mention specific chemicals, possibility to export all your data into format suitable for computer analysis, such as TSV, or reference management, such as RIS. And finally, the possibility to view similar publications based in part on shared medical topics. LitCovid has been updated every day, including weekends. Our curation efforts have hugely evolved over time, starting with fully manual curation in the first months of the pandemic, which evolved into a pipeline combining deep learning models and manual review. LitCovid has been accessed millions of times and used by hundreds of institutions. We sincerely hope that LitCovid has been useful to the scientific community, and we are looking forward to continuing in improving it. We are happy to answer any of your questions.